All right, so we're recording. Um, Allie here, and um, my thought for today's little mini practice would just be um, standing at the wall and kind of emphasizing um, like mobility or um, just trying to enhance a little bit, maybe some range in the shoulder girdle area. And so, um, yeah, that's what it is. I'll back up to the wall. So hopefully I have arranged this so you can see the whole of me, the whole of my body. We're just going to come back up to the wall. So can you have my hips, my glutes resting at the wall? But my heels are not touching. Yours might, mine just don't. When my backside is against the wall, very difficult for me to get my heels against the wall as well. So just take mine a little bit out in front. Here, the lumbar curve is away from the wall, but my shoulders, right, my shoulder blades there are at the wall, as are my back ribs, right? So the back of my neck is not pressing into the wall. The back of my head does touch, yours might not, okay? So let's start here. And just take a few moments to breathe. Just allowing the breath to completely fill up the container of the body. We're not necessarily breathing in any specific way. We're just here for it. We're just here for the breath. Let's take one more. We'll just raise the arms up. All right, so we're going to take the arms up the wall. And then from here, we're going to bend the elbows and bring the arms to this cactus type of shape, or sometimes it's called goalpost arms. Right? And so I want to keep the scapula, so the backs of my shoulders, the backs of my arms, the backs of my hands connected to the wall here. And on inhalation, I'm just going to raise my arms as far as they go without losing that contact. And this is going to be different for everybody. I'm just going to lower my arms back down, maintaining that connection to the wall. Inhaling, raising the arms back up, maintaining that connection, stopping when any parts of the arms try to come away from the wall, and exhaling to bring the arms back down. I'll just do this a couple more times. Inhaling, reaching the arms up, and you might go faster than me, or maybe my speed is too fast for you and you go slower than me, and that's all fine. I'll just do a couple more. And I don't know about how this feels in your body. For me, this is work. So I'm definitely feeling the work here. Let's do one more here. And then just release the arms down. And just give yourself a moment to notice, just a moment to just kind of acknowledge that bit of work, noticing how it felt to just be there with that bit of practice. And then from there, hips still at the wall, so booty is still resting at the wall. I'm going to walk my feet out a little bit. I'm going to bend my knees here generously, just kind of gently sliding down a little bit. And then from there, I'm just going to move into kind of a well-supported forward fold, just allowing my arms to hang. Allowing my head to hang a little bit there. Maybe tucking the chin towards the chest. 
We'll just be here for a few good breaths. And then gently rolling back up. And if it's not good for you to roll up, just press yourself up with a flatter back. I'm just going to set my feet in and come gently away from the wall. And just roll your shoulders up and back and down a couple of times here. What we'll practice now is called the arm clock. So the arm the clock. Uh, the first time I met this exercise, I didn't like it very much. I kind of told myself I wasn't going to do it ever again, but I was approaching this from a place of kind of massive shoulder injuries, arm injuries. So it was actually really beneficial for me. And so hopefully you'll find the same. What we're doing is we're bringing ourselves right hip towards the wall. We're going to take the right arm up. So straight up, placing the hand at the wall. So we're kind of in a nice tadas, it's like a mountain standing position, nice and straight. We don't want to allow this right hip to kind of list towards the wall. We want to stand up nice and tall using our leg muscles, right? This left arm is going to hang down, so it comes down, and then we're turning the palm facing out. And we're just here for a moment. And anytime any of this feels like too much sensation, you simply turn your toes towards the wall. And if it feels as though you would like more sensation, you turn your toes towards the room. So that's how you kind of maintain proper sensation for your specific body. So we'll just be here at this 12 o'clock for just a couple more breaths. And then we'll walk the hand back behind to what we will call one o'clock. And just notice how changing that orientation, just walking that hand back a little bit, changes the sensation that you're feeling here in this right arm. And we'll walk the hand down a little bit more. We'll just call that two o'clock. Just noticing how that feels, the sensation in the arm, maybe even feeling it into the kind of armpit and chest area. Remembering if this is too much sensation for you, turn your toes towards the wall. And if it feels like not enough, you can turn your toes towards the room. Just another breath or so. And then we'll walk the hand to what we will call three o'clock. So arm at three. Just about four or five good breaths here. And then walking that hand down to four o'clock. And we're going to keep that hip from lifting towards the wall. And then bringing the hand down to five o'clock. And then finally coming all the way down to six. We'll just pause there for a couple of breaths. And so against the wall in that six o'clock, 
And then we'll release. Just give ourselves a moment for awareness, right? That interoceptive pause. It might feel really good here to roll the shoulders a little bit. You can do both shoulders back, or you can do one shoulder back at a time. It might feel good to take the shoulders forward and shake it out. And then we'll practice that little sequence on the second side. So we're just turning the body so that we're now standing to the left with the left arm reaching up the wall. Again, we want to make sure that the way that we're standing doesn't have us listing towards the wall. We want to be standing up in our nice standing position, Tadasana, right? So Tadasana feet, reaching the left arm up, taking a moment to turn that right hand towards the center of the room, remembering more sensation, you turn the toes to the room, less sensation, turn the toes towards the wall. So we're here at this 12 o'clock for just another breath or so. You can hear the train coming through. And then from here, we'll just walk that hand back to what we'll call 11 o'clock. We're just here for about four or five breaths. And you might already begin to notice if this side feels the same or similar or completely different than the other side of belt. And then we'll walk the hand down a little bit more, coming to a 10 o'clock. Breathing. And from there, walking that arm all the way down to nine o'clock. So we're at that halfway, that nine o'clock. Just a few breaths here. Walking that hand down to, it's eight o'clock. If there's a back bend there, try to take the back bend out, drawing the belly in just a little bit, standing up nice and tall. Walk that hand down to, Seven o'clock. I think I skipped eight o'clock. Hmm. We got a pretty good range there. Making our way back to our six o'clock. And then we'll let that go. Just taking those moments of pause, just noticing how the arms feel here. If it would feel nice to kind of shake the arms out a little bit, please do. If it would feel good to kind of roll the shoulders up and back and down a couple of times, please do. You can take one shoulder back at a time. We'll just kind of See how the arms feel here as we inhale and sweep our arms up. You could gently look up here if you'd like to. 
and exhale, float the arms down. Just taking a few sun breaths here. Inhaling, reaching the arms up. And exhaling, floating the arms down. Let's do this a couple more times. Inhaling, taking the arms up. And exhaling, floating the arms back down. Last one. So there you have it. That's our arm clock practice. Thank you. Bye.